Hey guys, I'm Sabrina. Um, if you're new here, this is a channel where I'm going to be sharing my furniture flipping sort of adventures. I started furniture flipping about two months ago, not even, at the beginning of March 2021. So yeah, I've only been doing it for a little bit now, so I thought it'd be great to show you guys how I'm learning and working through it while also sharing my profits and my journey through selling and buying and all that fun stuff. So in today's video, we're going to be doing some vintage velvet chair flips. So we're going to be ripping those skirts off or folding them under. I'm going to show you how I do it and how easy it really can be and how good of a profit you can make. So stay tuned if you want to see that. And uh, if you end up liking this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more furniture flipping content. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys some of the different tools that I use to do the skirts and everything on the chairs when I take the skirt off and, you know, take the staples out and all that stuff. It's nothing too crazy. Um, you probably already own a few of them and if not, it would definitely make sense to invest in some if you don't have them and I'll let you know which ones I use a lot. So you definitely need a hammer. This is a pretty small hammer and I find that it's really good for hammering in your staples if they don't go in far enough when you use your staple gun. So that sort of takes me to the second one. I have this staple gun here. I sort of just already had it. I know you can buy smaller versions that aren't as heavy duty like this one says, and then you can buy a bunch of different size staples for different fabric thicknesses and different projects. So I pretty much use this for stapling the skirts underneath the chairs for the ones where I cannot remove the skirts. And I'll show you what I mean in some of my other chairs that I have today because not all of them you can remove the skirt some of them they have to stay on and be folded under trimmed and then stapled with this bad boy so you're definitely going to need a flathead screwdriver to sorry pry some of the um staples out and once you have them lifted you can then use needle nose tw needle nose pliers to grab them and pull them out i'll show you how i do that after um, I use actual pliers, like really strong grippy ones to rip the skirts off and pretty much take most of the staples with it. So usually most of the staples come out with it, but if not, you have other pliers and even these ones that you can use to just remove the ones that didn't come out. And then also this isn't really the safest thing. If you have, um, a screwdriver that's long and doesn't have this part on it, you can probably use that instead. But I've seen other flippers use just scissors to go under the seam and lift to get your first little spot that you then use the scissors to cut. So yeah, I use those. Um, you'll see how I use those later. But yeah, those are pretty much all of the tools that I have that I use to take the skirts off. So yeah, if you want to see me use them, stay tuned. All right, so I got one of the chairs here. It's actually a set of two that I purchased for $50, so $25 a chair. Um, it's actually a long story, I'll tell you the rest later, but the first thing you wanna do when you get your chair, it's not cleaned or anything, is you wanna flip it so that you can see what you work, you're working with on the bottom. So you just wanna flip it over like this. And so you can see when you zoom in close that there is blue velvet continuing all the way along the sides, but here they have brought the black dust skirt up really high. So you wanna almost feel underneath that to make sure that the velvet continues before you rip things off and then find that your uh, velvet's not finished and there's wood showing. So I've already done one of these chairs before this one, so I'm showing you the process here. And it seems that everything's okay with these, so I'm gonna go ahead and rip the skirt off all the way until I reach here, and then I'm going to remove the staples of the staples holding the sort of dust skirt in before I rip here because you don't want to rip the dust skirt that you're trying to reuse. So let me do that and I'll show you how I do it. You want to find an area where you can fit your scissors or screwdrivers in between the staples to sort of pry it up and get a hole where you can then cut it. So what I'm going to do is take my scissors and find, I see there might be a hole right here. So I'm going to try and 
go underneath. You want to be really careful when you're doing this so that you don't hurt yourself. Um, and you almost just want to like pry it up like this. It takes a little bit of elbow grease at first, but as you can see, it is lifting here now. So now I can go ahead and cut this and then start ripping it off. You want to get yourself some sharp scissors because it can be a little bit tricky to cut through the velvet. All right, so now that that's cut, I've got a great starting point. Then I can take my heavy duty pliers and start ripping. So you wanna get like a nice grip here and then sort of just like rip like this. And as you can see, it comes off with most of the staples, but be careful because sometimes there are a few staples left over and you don't wanna pinch yourself on them. So then you just wanna like turn the chair as you go and go around. You can flip it back over if that's easier. Go all the way around. But for this one, remember the black dust skirt, I'm gonna stop before I get all the way to the front. So there we go, that's that. So now I'm going to take care here, maybe I can make it work, to not rip, see what I mean about the dust skirt? See, if you wanna like reuse that, you're not trying to rip it too much. So because we're gonna be tucking that underneath, I'm not too worried about the very end of it there. I'm just being really mindful to make sure I will still have enough to tuck underneath and staple. This one seems to be cooperating. All right, perfect. There we go, less than five minutes and the skirt is off. All right, so now that the skirt is off, you can see there are a bunch of staples like sticking out. So we have to take care to get all of those out so nobody hurts themselves and so that it looks good. So if you wanna come in close, you can see, so I have my needle nose pliers here. You just sort of have to go like that to pry it out. It's easier if you go on an angle than just trying to rip it out straight because you need a little bit of leverage to take it out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all the way around and then we'll check back. Okay, so now that all the staples are out, I'm going to go back and tuck this underneath so that it's not sticking up and use my staple gun to restaple it. So once you're happy with the amount of staples you have, you can take your hammer and sort of just hammer them in even tightly, even more tightly because sometimes it's really difficult when it goes in, it will go in like sideways or it won't go in all the way. So you just want to take your hammer and hammer them in. This will ensure everything's in tightly and nothing's going to pop out of place when you're moving things around. All right guys, so this is the next chair. This is actually like a great chair. Um, it's so, it's in great condition. Um, actually, I don't really remember how much I got this one for. I think it was only 20, 25 bucks. I will confirm at the end of the video, but it was a great price and um, yeah, like really nothing's wrong with it. So sometimes on different chairs, you have to do different things to the skirts. It is so amazing when you can just rip it off but sometimes you're so excited to rip it off and then you find that the bottom underneath is not actually finished and it looks like complete poop. So you're gonna have to come underneath and look at it up close. So as you can see underneath, there is no dust skirt and they actually have wood planks holding the swivel bottom. Swivel bottom. So the only thing with these chairs is sometimes I like to you know just check make sure and sometimes they're okay and they do go underneath or there's enough fabric but as you can see here so this is the part that we're going to be ripping off and then this is what we'll have left 
So it's really unfinished. It's just sort of sitting and there's not even enough to fold underneath and staple to make it look like it's finished. And sometimes this is actually a good one. There is actually fabric covering the wood, but sometimes it ends up here and you're seeing all this wood and you go to rip the skirt off and you realize you have to put it back on because there's not enough fabric to cover the wood and it really looks really, really bad. So always double check that because there is another option and I'm gonna show it to you right now. Okay, so you wanna take your scissors and you see how underneath here, there is almost like a stiff piece of paper. So I like to remove that stiff piece of paper so that when I am folding it under, cutting the excess and stapling, my stapler has less thickness to go through and the staples are more likely to stick and do their job. So you wanna just like sort of cut into the fabric here. You're not gonna see this, so it doesn't really matter. You just want enough room to sort of if you want, you can take that off too. I mean, it's gonna come off anyways. So you can like cut that off. Usually it rips pretty easily, depending on the material they've used. So as you can see, it sort of just like rips off super nicely like that. You do wanna take care not to damage too much because you never know what you're gonna end up using. So just cut that off. That. Toss that to the side. So now you can take this out. See how it's super thick and like foamy and sort of just like, just would be a waste to just keep that on and have to staple through it. So we're gonna also toss that out. So now you are free to trim the excess that you are not gonna be using. So you pretty much just need to leave enough so that you can fold it under and staple. And the amount of wood here is not very big. It's really only about an inch. So you're not gonna need to keep that much fabric, but keep in mind you can trim off excess after you staple, so don't cut off too much at first. So I'm just gonna cut off just below halfway. All right, so now it's time to do the stapling. So I'm going to you know, fold this in a way that I like and staple it in place. So with these little corner pieces, I just fold it like this and do a little staple to hold it in place and then I just fold it over like this and staple it in place again just like that and then I use my hammer to sort of hammer the staples in a little bit deeper because the fabric is sort of thick So I want the front piece to be folded over top of the side piece like this. So I'm going to fold the side piece first and just staple it in place like that. All right, so this is how I stapled the corner. So now I'm going to go along and staple a few in the middle and then I'm gonna do the other corner. So you can just see that I really stapled it down so that nothing's sticking up and it all looks nice and clean. Okay, so this is it all stapled and trimmed. So if you wanna take a look, I sort of stapled and trimmed as I went depending on the area and how much I felt I needed to cover what I needed to cover. And then I just stapled down any areas that were sticking up and hammered them in. Simple as that. So 
as you can see, the bottom looks nice and clean and it all has a finish. Nothing weird is sticking down. And the bonus is you don't even get that line you get when you take the skirt all the way off. It's a little bit more work, but if you think about it, the result may actually be better. So it's definitely worth it. All right, so this is the last chair of the day. Um, this chair was like $20. At first I thought we were gonna keep it, but we actually decided to flip it. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna fold the skirt under on this one also. I found that a majority of the chairs that I get, I end up having to fold the skirt under. It's a little bit more work, but to be honest, it's not a big deal, especially if you can't rip the skirt off. So don't feel discouraged if you do have to fold it under. Just make sure that you do a good job and make it look clean. So I'm just gonna do that and then we'll check back in when I'm done. Okay guys, so I actually made a mistake and I cut this side too short. As you can see, it folds under here and that's okay because I can put staples here and this side's okay too. But because it curves, I got a little too carried away and I should have stopped before the curve because this part, so you can see this is where it folds under and this part barely makes it. So hopefully I can cover it with this and do a little staple situation there and it will fix the problem, but this is why I need to follow my own advice and not take too much off, and this is why you should do it longer rather than shorter, because you can always take some away, but you cannot add it once it's gone. So let me fix that, and I'll show you the final results. Okay, so... This one had a really thick piece of wood on the side. So as you can see on this one, there's only like a very small amount of this rolled fabric. But on this one, the wood is about two inches under the seam. So we've had to fold it a little bit farther. So in the back, we decided to almost like create the length by covering um, these little planks and attaching the staples to the planks so that it's even all the way around. So let's see what it looks like standing up. Okay, so now we're gonna clean all of the chairs. We have a little Bissell um, upholstery cleaner uh, over here with a little like vacuum on it. So we're going to wet it, soap it down, sort of try and get any stains out with these little brushes and then we're going to 
dry it and rinse it out. So now that all the soap is applied, I'm just going to agitate it with this brush just to really get in there and get out any deep dirt and stains and grime. And this is really satisfying because it really agitates the soap and makes some bubbles. So now that that's all done, the chairs are ready for staging. So I've just started using um, my garage door because there's daylight, it's black, and I just put carpets down and sort of make it look like inside outside. And since the lighting's so good, I really get away with it because I'm making it look like they're on not just dirt. So if you're gonna stage outside, just make sure you're not putting your items on some dirty surface or just on the grass where there's like, it could make people think that you know it may be water damaged or have dirt on it so yeah if you want to see how I stage the my chairs just keep on watching and we'll get right to it and taking pictures of all the chairs so you just want to make sure to get it from a lot of different angles and then you can go back later and choose which ones you like and edit the lighting a bit to make it nice and bright and make sure all the colors are popping and nothing's blurry or hazy so that's the end of the video and i hope you liked it so let's get into the profits of some of the chairs that have already sold less than a day later from me posting them on facebook marketplace all right, so now I'm just going to talk about a little bit of the profits since filming this video two chairs have already sold the orange one and the blue one that turned out almost perfectly. The other blue one still has a bit of discoloration. We couldn't get everything out of it even though we cleaned it a couple of different times. So one chair turned out really really well and I bought the, both of the chairs for $25 each. So I bought it for $25 and I ended up listing it at $155 for the one in better condition. So what I do is I cut up the price of the gas for the amount of items and I sort of divide it so that each item gets an equal share of the gas so that the gas expense doesn't just fall on one item. So taking out gas, which was only $5, I still made a profit of $125 on just one blue chair. I do have the other one listed at $130, hoping to sell it for that but because it's a little bit more discolored I don't know if I'm gonna get 130 but I am willing to go a little bit lower so make sure you check back on my update video to see what that one sold for so the orange chair I bought it for $30 um, gas was $12 and I sold it for $185 my full asking price so my total profit for the orange chair was $142 so I find that if you can find these chairs in really really great condition you can price them a little bit higher and maybe where I live they're just more in demand so know your market do some research on Facebook marketplace to see what similar items of the same caliber of your item are selling for and that way you can get an idea of 
what to price your items at. So yeah, that was just the profits that I've gotten so far for the items that have sold since I made that video. But for all the other items in this video and all the other items that I am flipping right now and that I can't really show you all of my quick flips and everything that's happened since I started flipping, I'm going to make an update video so that I can show you everything and all of the profits that I have been making off of those things and I'll break it all down for you. So make sure to check back for that video and I hope you liked it. And if you did, and if you think that it's going to be helpful for you to see more of this content, make sure to give it a like so that other people can see this content also and it can help them. And subscribe if you want to continue with me along this journey. But bye for now. I'll see you next time.